Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the first video of 2018, so uh, welcome to 2018. Um, it's been a bit quiet on my channel for the past couple of weeks or months even. Um, that is because I lost my voice. Uh, I had an infection and it was really bad and I'm still not sounding the way I should and I'm coughing a lot and I hope that this is going to go away soon. Um, but for the time being, that's where it's at. So, it's 2018, so um, there are a few changes. Um, I've made some, I've uh, updated a lot of my work. And I'm going to start out with something that I added like two weeks ago. And I always promised that I would open source uh, the files and all the information about this 3D printer that I have been using a lot. Um, in fact, it's, it's a pretty big one, but let's see if we can fit it. Uh, this one. Uh, this is a 3D printer that I designed a couple of years ago and for a short time I actually lost um, the rights to this because I entered it in a competition and well the fine print actually said that I would sign away all my rights to this um, but as it turned out that competition never ended and it was never produced and the company that held the the competition went out of business and got bought by another com by another company and that other company now returned the rights to this uh, 3d printer to me um, because they are located in the united states and i'm not The design idea of this 3D printer is that it builds on repeating parts or modules or blocks, what you want to call it. Um, so this here is a motor block uh, and it's repeated two times over the printer. So it has a very low part count from the design specs. Um, there are other holders for, for the threaded rods and things like that. Also, for example, the, the holding elements um, of, the, uh, of the crane um, are repeating parts. So I already uploaded these files to um, my Robin 3D printer project. Um, this printer is called the uh, Robin Plus uh, for the fact that the belt assembly here, oh, you can't see that, uh, the belt assembly passes under the table and forms a plus sign. Uh, it's basically an inverted H shape. So um, it's really simple and it, it looks very nice when it's working. And it has the, the uh, benefit that because everything is mounted um, on one axis, it actually has a very small um, standing footprint and it, it also is capable of going really fast so that was uh, the design idea behind it and um, well now it's open source uh, more things will follow I suppose um, the parts are there, um, a bill of material is still missing, um, the sizes of the rods and the threaded rods are not there yet, but they're basically arbitrary. Uh, you could go for any size you want as long as you get the fitting parts. Um, I added one file of a uh, complete model and um, that should give you an idea of how it's supposed to look. I will be working on the uh, specifics of that uh, in the following days and weeks. And I will also update the files of the other Robin 3D printer um, because I've not been keeping track of that for some time and I have to do some catching up to do. So 
that's one of those things that's going on right now. The second thing that's going on is... Let's get this out of the way. I've started work on another 3D printer, which um, is going to be based on parts that I can now produce with the with my laser cutter, like for example uh, this cut acrylic. And um, in fact, this printer is so big that it's not going to fit the table. Uh, it will have a working area of uh, 350 by at least 350 millimeters and uh, it should have a, a working height of about 300 to 400 millimeters. Um, I'm going to add more information to that and that one is also going to be uh, completely open source. Um, and I'm going to have more documentation for that. Uh, I'm building that printer for the uh, for the educational facility that I'm putting in some some part-time work and uh, this should this should be really interesting because that is one huge beast uh, it is most of it is going to be built on um, on available parts like uh, these steel sliders um, it's going to use item profile uh, it's going to have a very low parts count. I'm, I want to make sure that these things are easy to reproduce as long as you can get the parts. And um, quite opposite to the other printers that consist 90% of printed parts, this is going to be one um, where you can go out, buy all the parts, and then assemble it. So those are the things that I have been working on. I've also spent quite some time while I was uh, while I was sick uh, working with uh, these pixels um, these are LEDs that have a microcontroller on it and they're very easy to control and I actually I've had a complete room of them uh, and I use these for lighting and you can have really cool effects and it's very nice uh, but recently I had uh, an issue buying them and uh, I got some uh, counterfeit pixels and they were completely different than, than the originals um, with, the, with the original chip on it and that was very disappointing. Uh, but I'm going to make a video about that because something really cool came from it. Uh, basically for a start that's it, that's all I have to talk about right now. I'm going to go into detail in other videos, but for a start of 2018, um, I think that's okay. Oh yeah, no, I forgot something. I, For those of you who are watching the Direct Ink to PCB videos, uh, I went ahead and I did a complete update on all the uh, software packages that are on GitHub and I made sure that they work with the available boards and the boards that you can order uh, through GLC PCB because I had some indications that some things might not be working and I actually found a bug in the software and I fixed it and I'm going to be working on making these things more readable and more reproducible. I might even uh, add some releases uh, that are specific builds that are pre-configured for the for the target boards so if you want to put one of those together you just have to download the right file upload the file and it should be pre-configured to work um, because I realized that for somebody who doesn't work in software um, the configuration can be quite a pain so well that's it then um, I hope you all got into 2018 okay. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.